Today we get a story of another Minecraft kid who thinks Freddy Fazbear is actually out to get him. However, this story has a bit of a twist to it, and when I received it, I knew I had to tell it. So stick around, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, subscribe, and let's get right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who sent in this story, we're gonna call him Benson. I got that name from the comment section, so leave it any names you want me to use down below in the comment section. But anyways, right, this is a story of Benson and his friend George, who is the, the Minecraft kid, but we're just gonna call him George from this point out. So this story started when Benson, the subscriber, and George, his friend, aka the Minecraft kid, who we're just gonna call George, they were out and it was like a Saturday and they were just playing at their local park. They both lived in the same neighborhood and they their parents allowed them to go out to the local park to, you know, to hang out, to like play with each other, whatever, ha having fun, right? And it was walking distance from both of their houses and uh, their parents kind of, they, they felt, uh, I don't know, confident enough to let them go out by themselves, uh, you know. Maybe they were mature enough, maybe the parents just thought like, ah, oh, they'll be fine or whatever. But anyways, they were free to go out and hang out whenever they wanted to, as long as they told their parents before they left. And this all happened one Saturday night. Uh, it was kind of getting dark outside, the sun was going down, and Benson and George were kind of just chilling there at the park, kind of staying a little bit later than they usually did. And this is where things started to get, you know, where, where things started to go down, per se, right? So Benson, Benson and George, they were kind of just chilling. They were both sitting on the swing set, and they weren't, like, actively swinging that hard. They are kind of just sitting there talking about, like, I don't know, the next game they wanted to play or maybe a homework assignment. They were both in third grade, and they went to the same school, and they had the same class. So, I don't know, man, maybe they were talking about some assignment or something. Either way, they were kind of talking, and they heard a rustling in the forest because right next to the park is a big patch of woods so maybe forest isn't the correct word but there is a quite a few trees and it was essentially a forest i don't know if technically it falls in that definition but then again man that's not my major uh, majoring in forest studies uh, that was my second choice but anyways right they they heard a rustling coming from the forest and they kind of assumed at first that it was like because because they looked over right it was getting dark they're the only ones there they wanted to make sure that it wasn't like a bear or maybe a deer or anything and while a deer probably wouldn't charge them they just wanted to see what it was and when they looked over they saw nothing and they kind of just assumed that, I don't know, man, maybe it was a squirrel in the trees making that rustling sound. Maybe it was just like, I don't know, a branch falling or just something natural that really wasn't a threat at all. And so they, they you know, they go back to their conversation. They're sitting on the swings. And that's when they hear, once again, this rustling sound coming from the forest. And this is when they start to, like, you know, look over again. Because first time, maybe it's just a squirrel. I mean, maybe it still was just a squirrel. But if it was a tree branch falling the second time, I don't know, it just caught their attention because it definitely sounded like something was kind of moving. And they didn't immediately think that, oh, it's something, like, scary or something they should be afraid of. But they just, you know, it caught their attention enough that they stopped talking to kind of look over. And while they didn't go over and necessarily investigate right away, they were kind of like, huh. I, I wonder what that was. And, you know, Benson looks over at George and is like, do you think that's a squirrel or something? And George is like, I don't know, man. Uh, it's, it's probably nothing, though. And as George was saying it's probably nothing, this time they heard an even bigger, like, crash. And this time it was very clear that there was, like, something moving around back there. And Benson's like, should we go investigate? And George is like, I don't know, man, if that's like a bear or something, maybe investigating is not the best idea. And George is, or Benson, the subscriber, is like, oh, come on, man, let's, let's just go in and see what it is. And by the way, uh, Benson put when he was writing up the story, and if you want to send me stories like the stories I've been telling, Instagram's in the description. Go follow me there, even if you're not going to send me stories because I like followers or whatever. But, you know, Benson, when he was writing this up to me, he added a little note saying, in general, do not do this. If you hear rustling or any kind of like potentially dangerous noise, do not do what every like main character in a horror, actually no, what every character that's assumed to be like game ended in a horror movie does is like, oh, let's go investigate the attic. Let's go investigate the basement. Also, let's split up and tell no one what we're doing. Yeah, uh, at least they didn't split up, right? But anyways, George eventually decided to go along with Benson, and they started to walk at least close to the edge of the woods. They weren't going to, like, sprint in there trying to figure it out, but they wanted to get at least close enough to the woods to figure out what was making this noise. So when Benson and George got closer to the edge of the woods... 
they heard it again. And then they kind of saw that like they because, you know, you can kind of hear where something is coming from. They looked at kind of a cluster of trees that was somewhat close to them, but also a little bit reserved into the into the forest. And they heard another like kind of this another branch crack kind of sounding like something was like moving, almost intentionally moving. And, you know, Benson, like, kind of, like, he doesn't yell out, but he says pretty loudly, he's like, George, look, over there, I think that's where the noise is coming from. So they both look over to this cluster of trees, and this is where the thing that, like, is kind of crazy happens. It it all gets explained later on. This is going to sound like some, I don't know, some scientific, like, some sci-fi story that's made up, but it all makes sense in just a second, don't worry. Because when they look over to that cluster of trees... What they see completely shocks them. They see kind of like, they see a bit of a shape behind the trees, and they're kind of confused like what it is. And as they're looking at the cluster of trees, they see this big kind of like Freddy Fazbear head kind of pop out and just stare at them. And at this point, right, they're both like standing there completely in shock because they know what, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's is. They played the game. They, you know, they've seen people play the game. And, you know, they've heard, like, internet rumors about it being an actual location and about how these things actually exist and how Scott Cawthon based this on, like, reality or whatever. But they never did believe it. But once they saw this, they were both completely shocked. And Benson just looks at George, and they turn around and sprint, the fastest these two have ever ran. So when Benson and George sprint, like, really far out of there, like, they're out of the park, and they're, like, a good five-minute walk away from the park at this point, they both kind of stop, they catch their breath, and after about, like, a minute of catching their breath, they just look at each other, and Benson goes to George, he's like, man, I... I, I think I saw something, but I, 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 I must have been seeing it incorrectly. And George just looks at Benson like, I mean, I th- if you saw what I saw, then, like, we both weren't hallucinating. And if we were hallucinating, we probably weren't hallucinating the exact same thing. And Benson says, so you saw a Freddy head. And George is like, yeah, it, it makes no sense. Like, he isn't real, but I, I saw what I saw. And Benson and George are just came so rattled by this that they're, you know, Benson and George are like, hey, man, or George is like, hey, let's just go back, let's go to bed, lock our doors at night, and let's just talk about this tomorrow. Because it, it was getting pretty late, it was getting dark, and they were pretty sure that their parents wanted them back home anyways. So the next day rolls around, and oh, by the way, they, they don't tell their parents because like, oh, I saw a video game creature head, <laughs> you know, in the park. If his parents heard that or any of their parents heard that, they'd probably be like, all right, our kid is not sleeping enough or like, all right, uh, this kid needs some help, bro. (laughs) Like he saw a video game creature in the park. Something's probably up. But anyways, right, the next day rolls around at school and, you know, they're, you know, they're sitting at like a lunch table and it's Benson, George and some other kids from the neighborhood. And this one kid from the neighborhood, uh, we're just going to call Ben because he doesn't really, you know, come into play that much often or after this point. Uh, or at least I don't need to use his name. So we're calling him Ben because that's the name I give to everyone. He's sitting at the table and he's like, I saw something really weird yesterday. And at this point, right, Benson and George look at each other and then they look at Ben and they're like, oh, what do you mean? Like, go on. Because they don't want to say that they saw like a video game character at the park because that would be ridiculous. But they look at him and, you know... Ben goes on to say, I, I was at the park and I was just there by myself and uh, I, 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 this is really weird, but I don't know how to say it, but you know, I heard something coming from the woods and Benson and George just look at him. And then Benson goes, did you see a, uh, a, a, a Freddy Fazbear head by any chance? And Ben's eyes just go super wide. He's like, yes, like, I didn't think anyone would believe me. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, did you see him too? And he's like, yeah. Ben said, uh, like, a George and I, we're at the park, and we heard something, and w- we didn't believe what we saw, but we both saw it, so it had to be true. And Benson, George, and, you know, Ben, and the other kids at the table, because, like, one or two other kids had a similar experience, since they all live in the same neighborhood, and this was a very popular park, they all came together, and they're like, all right, let's think about this logically. There is most likely not actually a real Freddy Fazbear. Like, we're just going to assume that he's not actually real. And by the way, comment Freddy down below right now. I will be hearting a bunch of random people who comment that. It just shows to me that you made it this far into the video, and I really do appreciate it. Anyways, though, they all sit at the table, and they're like, all right, reasonably, he's not real. However, we all saw the same thing, so we definitely saw something. So they sat down there, and they decided to concoct up a plan to investigate you know, the situation and try and lure this like Freddy or whoever this is 
out of the woods and to actually figure out what is going on. So they wait till the end of school, and then after school, they all kind of like meet up a little bit outside the park, but also out of the view of the park. So nobody in the park or in the woods, whoever that might be, maybe it's, you know, a person or an animatronic, who even knows at this point, could see them meeting up. So they meet up and they're like, all right, who's going to be bait again? And Benson says, all right, I'll be the bait. And George decides to stay on the other team. And the only reason we have both perspectives on this is that uh, Benson and George, or George, Benson, the subscriber, submitted the story, but George gave him the account from, you know, what he couldn't see. But anyways, right, the plan is Benson is going to go into the park, and he's going to see if, like, anything, like, because maybe, like, people being there would trigger whoever is in there to kind of make noise and try and come out. However, the other team, which is basically everyone else at the, at the lunch table, so that means George, Ben, and the other kids who were there, are going to be kind of secretly not in sight, but they're going to be like sneaking up a little bit into the forest. Some of, they're gonna, some of them are, are going to be like perched outside of the park. Essentially, right, they're going to stay hidden incognito while trying to figure out, you know, who is behind all of this. The idea is that Benson will lure them out or at least, you know, have their attention on Benson. And then the other kids will be able to get in an ideal position to see who is actually behind this. So Benson is sitting on the swings. He's the bait, by the way. And he's sitting on the swings and he hears a crack. And he's starting to get a little bit nervous because like, hey man, uh, being the bait is not always the greatest role in these types of things. So Benson is sitting there and he hears another crack. And in the corner of his, of, of his eye, he looks over to see like, he kind of like, tries to visualize like where he saw you know the freddy guy before and he kind of looks over there and since he can't really look like with his whole head or can't turn his entire head without blowing his cover or making it look like he's trying to bait him right he can he only kind of like slowly shifts his eyes over and he looks at that patch of forest and sure enough it's blurry but he can see the outline of kind of like a you know the freddy head once again peeping out and he just continues to sit there as if he doesn't notice to try and like keep like give the other people time to figure out who's actually behind this. And, you know, the, the guy or at least there there's more noise coming from that side of the woods. The assumption is that the guy in the Freddy or if it actually is Freddy, spoiler, it's not. But the guy in the Freddy suit, whatever, is trying to like get his attention. So, you know, you know, Benson is sitting there on the swings. He's hearing more noise coming from that section. And at some point, right, you know, he's going to eventually turn and look. However, Benson is also constantly looking at this area that's kind of far away. It's out of the view of the forest, but it's in view of Benson sitting on the swing. And he looks there and he sees George. George is not the one sitting on the swing, but George is the one who did part of the investigation. And George is giving him the thumbs up single signal. It, by the way, one thing that they added was when the investigation team had gotten what they needed, you know, they were to give the thumbs up so that Benson could, you know, walk away from the swing set and know when he's basically done with his part of the deal. So Benson gets up, he gets off the swings and he walks out of the park and they all meet up again. And Benson's like, all right, so like, what did you guys find? And George and the others told their findings. George goes on to say, while you were distracting whoever was behind there, Benson, we were able to get around and look at like, look into the forest at all these different angles without being detected. And sure enough, we all saw what we saw before, a Freddy head. However, the rest of the body was a human body. And we got, one of us was able to get closer, points to Ben, right? And he's like, one of us was able to get closer and confirm who it was. George points to Ben and Ben kind of stands up. He's like, I was able to get close enough and I recognized the outfit. And he said the name of who wore the outfit at school that day. And they all knew who this was. This was a kid in one grade above them who is notorious for bullying kids, and especially kids that were younger than him. They all knew who it was at this point, and they realized that the school bully would bought this, like, Freddy Fazbear costume, or at least the head part, and knew that everyone, especially the kids in the grade below him, which were them, really enjoyed the park. So he would wait out after school and scare anyone who came. Ben, George, and Benson, and the other kids did eventually get revenge on this bully, but I'm going to save that from an for another part. I don't normally like doing the part one and part two like on TikTok. That's very annoying. However, I don't want to make these videos too long, and also I can't make them too long because of my own software restrictions. But anyways, make sure to subscribe to see the part two 
leave a like on the video, and then click one of the four videos on screen right now slash watch another video to support the channel. Peace.